Hi, Gillian. So I'm the general manager at the Gladstone Seafarers Centre. We are part of Mission to Seafarers Australia. We offer welfare services to seafarers from every walk of life. And here in Gladstone, we we have this system where we stand back to back with the poor. So we don't just work with the seafarers, we work with what we call the people of the sea. Anyone involved in the loading of the vessels, the people that live in the port, the shops where the seafarers spend their money. So anyone that's got that connection to the ocean, we work to support them from our centre. You know, 93% of all the products that come in and out of our homes, they, they come here by a ship. We are an island nation. And whilst we're rich in natural resources, we don't have that, that manufacturing industry here. So we send our raw materials offshore and we bring back in those finished materials. One of the biggest things that's been highlighted for me during COVID is the flow on effect of that. If the vessels can't come, the coal can't load, which means the trains can't run, which means the mines can't mine, which means the towns in those mining areas inland that are so far away from the sea, the flow on effect to them is incredible. And it's something that we've never seen before and we've never had the opportunity to highlight to people. You know, it doesn't matter if you don't live on the coast, it doesn't mean you're not affected by the movement and the work of the seafarers. Look, we've been really lucky here in Gladstone and I think across Queensland as well. You know, we do, we do a lot of good collaboration in our port amongst different agencies. There was an extended period of probably about three months where we weren't able to bring the seafarers off the vessels for their regular visits. And that was a more a decision that was made by our board around our duty of care to protect the seafarers. It wasn't a fear that they would make us sick, but a fear that if we made them sick, there's a lack of medical resources out in the middle of the ocean and ways to support them. So I guess what we've done through that period is we've moved to this care package model of welfare. Every vessel that comes to Gladstone gets a care package delivered to it. It's got the basic essentials and things that they needed, toothpaste, toiletries, those sorts of things. We also put in a lot of different activities and games and things that under normal circumstances you wouldn't necessarily be putting onto a vessel, but in times I guess of of that stress and that isolation, activities that they can use to stimulate their mental health and to, to encourage them to not be isolated from each other. One of the things we started running is our Comite Challenge, where we're challenging the seafarers to try Vegemite for the first time. So little portions of Vegemite are going onto each vessel. So it's not just about the actual Vegemite, it's about that opportunity for them to come together. And you know, as soon as I said the Comite Challenge, you smiled. We all smile about it and we all think, wouldn't that, you know, it would be pretty funny to watch, but it's, it's the action of them coming together. It's the time spent talking about it and saying, no, you try it first, no, you try it first. And, and as a part of that, we're running it as a competition. So they send us the video of them trying it. When they send the video through, it opens that door of communication to, for us to have that communication with them and see what they need. And in addition to that, we've been putting free SIM cards and throwing phone credit onto every vessel as well. And we're finding that the ability to contact home is probably the best thing we can do for their mental health in these times. You know, accessing the funding for the care packages was fairly easy. All of my, my local industry reps here put their hands up straight away and threw in, you know, $1,000, $400 here and there to get us started. The TK Foundation and the ITF both gave us $12,000 each in funding. But more recently, um, BMA of all places from the operational fund from the Mackay port actually gave us $54,000. So BHP don't even work in Gladstone, but they loved what we were doing and they wanted to support that welfare thing. So they gave us a large amount of funding, which kept the ball rolling accessing the funding was actually easier than accessing the product because in a small town you know it, it, it's been difficult and you know with everybody being concerned about hoarding and stuff when we go and buy 300 toothbrushes at once but you know 300 toothbrushes that only gets me through 25 vessels so that's only two days worth in Gladstone with, with the way that we turn over vessels here so we do the shopping over a month or so slowly every day we go to another shop and buy something else and then we do a big stockpiling we pack 100 boxes and over the next month whilst we're delivering them then again, we start the process again, buying in a little bits and pieces. Yeah, look, I think for everyone working in the industry, it's, it's all about perspective for me. When we have to look at working from home and we have to change the way that we shop and we go about our daily lives, when we think about how difficult it was to be isolated, I think about doing that isolation with no connection to the internet, with no phone, with no TV, with no Netflix, um, you know, with very little to do, but actually do your work. From the seafarer's perspective, hang in there. I know it doesn't feel like a lot is happening right now, but there is a lot of work happening in the background that we don't always talk about or we don't have time to publicise.